Hello and welcome to the Headache Doctor podcast. I'm Dr. Taves and it's my mission to empower everyone with headaches and migraines to break free from a life of fear and dependence and thrive in everything you do. And I'm excited about today's podcast because we're going to talk about three reasons why you can't rely on your diagnosis to provide you with relief. This is the start of the medical process where you get a diagnosis and at the onset where you receive your diagnosis there's a few things that I need you the listener to understand anyone with headaches and migraines needs to understand this because that diagnosis will lead you down a path that is likely not going to solve your problem and so the the diagnosis at the onset we we can get that wrong and there's three reasons that I want to talk about we're getting that wrong why we're getting that wrong so this is this is very very important if we understand this um, we we can then make better decisions as far as our, with our own health with our own health care uh, we can be educated so that when you see your primary care doctor or you see your neurologist you're actually uh, better equipped to have that conversation with them and say, what about this or what about that? And you can understand that potentially going down the road of another MRI or a CT scan might not be the best option, even though that is prescribed or um, it, it's done a lot of times just because they, they want to help you, they just don't know where to go or where to turn. So here it is, three reasons why you can't rely on your diagnosis to provide you with relief. Uh, so the first reason, your diagnosis was based on symptoms. I've said this before, uh, but it is such an important topic. So understanding that your diagnosis is based on symptoms is something that um, it does kind of give this sort of this, uh, this faulty foundation or this shaky foundation of the diagnosis itself. So within medicine, within healthcare, when we make a diagnosis, we really want it to be attached to an objective finding. Okay, so but a lot of times diagnoses are based just off of we're just describing what the patient feels and using medical terminology. That sounds kind of funny, but for example, if you have pain on the outside of your elbow, we call it lateral epicondylitis, which really just is another way of saying you have pain on the outside of your elbow. Um, if you have neck pain, we'll call it cervicalgia, which is really just saying you have neck pain. And these diagnoses really, they're, they're just describing pain. They're just describing your symptoms. And, and then those symptoms are really what's driving uh, your plan of care, or what medication you receive or uh, what the doctor prescribes. And so um, the, the symptoms when it comes to headaches and migraines, there's probably a dozen, several dozen different types of diagnoses that you could receive and and what we've done is said okay we've advanced so much in our research and in our studies that we just keep coming up with different diagnoses when in reality we're just describing pain different patterns of pain um, in different ways and so the diagnosis is not necessarily having a diagnosis for the patient, for you, and you've probably experienced this, it's not like this revelation that you get excited about and like, oh, now we have an answer. Now we can determine what treatment's gonna look like. Because oftentimes uh, you get your diagnosis, it's describing what you're feeling and the, it doesn't necessarily lead to relief. Um, and so that's that's part of it. Don't, don't assume that just because you have a diagnosis, it means that oh my gosh, now we found something objective on the MRI or the CT scan, or now my doctor knows what to do for me. Because oftentimes just having a diagnosis is describing your pain and it doesn't necessarily mean we know what to do now. So that's the first thing. It doesn't, it doesn't direct your care necessarily. The, the negative effect to having a diagnosis, maybe if let's say you have a migraine diagnosis, what you'll read and hear and what your doctor might say is that because you have migraines, this is a chemical imbalance or this is a chemical process that requires prescription medication to solve the problem. Now that's the problem is because your diagnosis was based on symptoms, not something objective, um, they, 
they they shouldn't be saying that. They shouldn't be saying that it's just a chemical process that needs to sort of be reoriented or fixed through pharmaceuticals, um, because the research that we've done, and this is this is going to transition to my second point, um, but they don't have solid evidence. They don't have solid research to say that that is true. And so they really don't have an answer objectively of what is happening. They just see sort of this correlation to um, these, these different processes that happen and how we perceive pain. Um, and so what it does is it says, okay, you have migraines or you're thinking as a patient, I have migraines. And that means that my, my brain is basically just going through this chemical uh, experience that's, that's triggering pain. And so I'm just going to need to rely on medication to manage it. It's the most detrimental thing that can be done for these patients because it's likely not true. Um, and when we understand the neck and the pain pathway involved, it's it's very likely, not, not just like, oh, there's some patients, it's very likely actually that it's a neck problem. And I see this in my clinic. I mean, 80, 85% of people I see with these migraine diagnoses that have not found relief through medication are getting better. So it's important to understand um, that it's not necessarily giving them something objective to treat. And then the negative effect is that you now think that your brain is needing a pharmaceutical intervention to help it. Um, and that is not true. And, and the other, it, it, yeah, oftentimes it's not true. So the other thing that can um, sort, of, sort of happen is as a migraine sufferer, you want you, you kind of want that label, and I understand this completely, but you want that label because it, it sort of gives you this, this justification of what you feel because the pain is so debilitating. It, it takes over your life. And so to say you have migraines is sort of like being able to, you're, you're a part of this group of people that has the migraine diagnosis and you know how debilitating that is. And, and so you hold on to that. And part of that, like, I have migraines is almost like I, I want to be, I, I should be seen as, um, and what the medical community has told me is uh, there's not really a solution to it. And um, I, I want to, uh, I want people to understand how bad this is for me. And I completely understand that because they are so debilitating. But again, the negative effect of that is that you're holding on to your migraine diagnosis and not acknowledging that potentially there could be a solution. And, and especially, uh, I work with this all the time when people think, well, that there's no way that this could just be fixed by someone working on my neck. When in all reality, it, there's a good chance that it can be. But it just seems like such a simple solution to something that feels so terrible and no one can figure out an answer to that we, we create this barrier in ourselves because um, that migraine nos diagnosis isn't a neck problem or isn't explained that way. So uh, another kind of caveat here, there is a study of a, um, a gentleman in Europe, he's a construction worker, he's on the construction site and he's, he's working with a nail gun and a nail gets shot through his boot. And he's looking at his foot and he, he's in excruciating pain. He's writhing in pain. The, they call the ambulance. The ambulance comes, takes him to the hospital. They can't even touch his foot or his boot. So they, they have to carefully cut his boot off because they can't take it off. And what they find is that the nail went in between his toes. It didn't even, uh, it didn't wound him at all. There was no... Uh, cut or abrasion on his foot. And so there's no reason for him to have pain. But what happened was he was creating the scenario in his head where the pain was there because he was seeing this nail go through his foot. Um, and so the, there's, this, there's this other caveat of the diagnosis being based off of pain where that pain is a subjective thing and it can be very different um, from person to person. And so we can't rely on pain itself. We have to find something objective. So that's number one, and I'll repeat it. The diagnosis was based on simple symptoms, so unless they found something objective and treated effectively, um, you can't just rely on your diagnosis to um, navigate treatment, okay? So don't rule anything out, and don't assume that there's only one way because of that diagnosis. The second thing I wanna talk about is this idea of causation versus correlation. So this second point is, what do sharks and ice cream have to do with headaches and migraines? I'm going to go back to a, 
sort of basic teaching in a statistics course where they talk about ice cream sales and shark attacks. And do ice cream sales cause shark attacks? Because in the, in the summertime, we see that there's a correlation between the, the amount of ice cream sold and the number of shark attacks. And the problem in this statistics course, and the reason we use this example, is that it's silly to think that ice cream sales cause shark attacks. And the, the, the kind of crazy thing is, is even though that seems so silly and such a basic lesson, we do that all the time um, in healthcare and, and really in a lot of things is we assume causation when really there's just a correlation. And so um, ice cream sales and shark attacks really have nothing to do with each other, other other than it's warm, it's hot, people get outside, they go to the beach and they buy ice cream. So um, there's no causation between them, but we see them connected. So in the, in the research with headaches and migraines and when we come to this diagnosis of migraine, they're seeing this sort of chemical process and this connection to the trigeminal uh, vascular system and the trigem trigeminal cervical nucleus and the trigeminal nerve, which are, those are all big words that basically mean there's a nerve in your head that is connected uh, to blood vessels in your head and there's a change during a migraine that they're seeing. So again, just because we're seeing a, a change doesn't mean that it's causing your migraine. Um, it's a, it is likely a correlation. And so taking my approach and assuming that this is a neck problem is not, is not taking the research that has been done and setting it aside because clearly there's evidence to say that things are happening. What it's doing is providing an alternative uh, cause that will lead to those types of things. So if I were to say that the actual source of pain was from your neck and that pain signal is then sent through the trigeminal cervical nucleus where kind of all these nerves, these sensory nerves meet up. And then the brain is having this hypersensitive uh, reaction to is an intense pain that's sent through that nucleus and it doesn't know where to attribute it. So there's all these other sim uh, systems or sensory systems that are like hyper irritated. And we see this sort of physiological response. And this is not just with migraines. Um, if you look up central sensitization, it'll show you that the way the body perceives pain actually can physically manifest itself in hypersensitivities to nerves and increase um, sort of like uh, changes in the blood blood vessels themselves. And, and you'll, you'll see patients that are like um, swollen in their ankle when there's no actual tissue damage, but their ankle, they can't even touch it. It's so sensitive or walk on it. And all that's happening is there's this automatic pain feedback loop and the brain is, is essentially thinking that it has to continue in this process because of the pain. And that's just an example of um, how we can't take pain as um, the objective truth. We have to understand where the source of pain is coming from and how the brain is responding to that. And there's, and, and just um, keep in mind, if, if you didn't understand any of that, that there's a reasonable explanation that does um, provide a sort of causation uh, of that pain source. And it does explain this correlation between the, the, the vessels, the blood vessels, and the chemical changes that are happening in your brain and um, what you experience as a migraine. So again, just because ice cream sales and shark attacks are correlated doesn't mean that there's a causation. Uh, in the uh, medical world, I believe that they are jumping to that conclusion. Um, and again, on WebMD, in, in the previous podcast, I talked about how um, they say that they don't know, they don't have an underlying cause, um, but the way they're practicing is based off of this idea that they are assuming that these changes they're seeing in the brain are causing it and they're prescribing medications in that way. And they will not say that they don't, I mean, I, I it's rare to me to hear someone say that, oh yeah, my neurologist said they don't know what's causing it um, or they don't explain this sort of process. They'll just prescribe the medication and, uh, and then keep trialing different meds. All right, so I hope that second one makes sense. It's causation versus correlation and what sharks and ice cream have to do with headaches and migraines. Uh, just because we see a correlation in the research doesn't mean that's the cause. All right, the third thing I want to talk about is that it's likely your neck was not evaluated appropriately in the uh, while they were providing you with that diagnosis or during the initial evaluation. 
So I don't, it doesn't really matter if you've had migraines for 30 years or if they just started last week. If it wasn't evaluated appropriately initially, it's likely been overlooked and is honestly likely something that needs to be treated. So what happens is they'll they'll have you into the you know the primary care of the neurology office and they might do a screen for your neck having you turn your head look up and down tip side to side and if they don't see any remarkable sort of loss of movement then they'll assume okay this isn't really a neck problem and the reason i say that is because right now in the journals that's best practice that's kind of like the recommended approach of ruling out the neck is do a cervical range of motion motion test and if it's normal then then move on because it's not a neck problem. And so the problem with that, and I've talked about this several times, but our our body does such a good job of compensating that um, the joints in the upper part of the neck, even if they have no movement at all, the middle portion of the neck, the lower portion of the neck is basically just going to do all the work for it. And so you can still turn your head nearly all the way to the right and to the left and look up and down, but that that is not... It's not specific enough to really rule out a neck problem. And that's why at that initial visit, uh, you'll present with this one-sided debilitating throbbing pain and you'll be able to turn your head all the way and look up and down and side to side. And then they'll say, okay, well, this is a migraine. We need to, we need to prescribe some meds. And so that's, that's kind of the typical um, you know, visit or evaluation process at the doctor's office. And then um, unfortunately, what will happen is the patient will then trial medications or maybe they'll just kind of give up and deal with their headaches or migraines uh, because they don't want to take the medication and they're left feeling hopeless um, unless they um, unless they truly find a provider that can evaluate the way it should be. The other thing that uh, I, I want to make clear is that just because you go to see a chiropractor or potentially even a physical therapist who does a more of an involved assessment on the neck, I I would encourage you, um, and this may sound kind of depressing because it's like, well, there's no one to fix me, but um, chiropractors will generally look at alignment, and I, I think this is safe to, to speak into, but um, in my experience, chiropractors look at alignment, so they're taking an x-ray and they're seeing if there's any adjustments that need to be made, uh, but they're not evaluating movement and, and not, not specifically the movement in the upper part of the neck that needs to be happening, happening even though they will address C1 and C2 um, in their adjustments. And so it's very, very common for patients to go seek chiropractic care, um, but not necessarily find the relief that they're searching for. And so don't assume that um, just because you've seen a chiropractor who looks at your neck and talks about C1, C2 means that that is the sufficient treatment or that's what you, um, that is the same as, as what I'm talking about because it's not necessarily the same. Uh, the other thing too is uh, most physical therapists, and I can say this with a fair amount of confidence, most physical therapists um, are not going to be able to evaluate their, your neck or treat it the way it should be. So I've even worked with physical therapists and tried to train them on this stuff. Um, and some of them, it, it clicks and they can get it. Um, others, it's very challenging to um, feel and evaluate the neck and then start working uh, with patients and uh, see that sort of improvement or progress. So um, it's, it's kind of like saying you went to a doctor and they didn't help you and so you just gave up on medicine. Uh, physical therapists, they come in all different shapes and sizes, varieties, specialties, that type of thing. So if you've been to a physical therapist and it did not help, do not throw out physical therapy as an option because it likely is going to be your solution. We just need to find you the right provider who's going to evaluate and treat your neck appropriately. So there's the third point. Your neck has not been evaluated the way it should be. And I would say um, that for most anyone, you need to assume that that's the case. Um, I know that you might think, well, I've been to a chiropractor, I saw a PT, he seemed to be pretty good, um, and I resonate with what you said at the doctor's office, but I can get how just general range of motion isn't going to test it. I want you to assume if you're still relying on medications and have not found relief, that it's uh, a neck problem that just has not been addressed the way it should. Um, so hopefully that's helpful. There's my three reasons you can't rely on your diagnosis to provide you with relief. I'll run through them quickly again. One, your diagnosis was based on symptoms. Two, causation versus correlation. And we can't take 
the correlation and what we're seeing in the research to mean that it's causing your migraines. And three, the neck was not like, it was likely not evaluated appropriately. I'm Dr. Taves. This is the Headache Doctor podcast where it's my mission to empower you at home with headaches and migraines to break free from a life of fear of your next migraine or dependence on medication and thrive in everything you do. Um, I hope that this podcast gets you a little bit closer to that. And uh, I will look forward to seeing you next week and uh, providing you with more valuable information. Thanks for listening.